Well, good morning, good evening, and good night to everybody. Today we're going to start working on chapter three, describing relationships, and we're going to be working on section 3.2, least squares regression. Um, as we go through, we can see that um, in least squared regression, we have a lot of things that we're going to talk about. So we'll start this off with the ambition of having one big video, but I'm sure we'll probably have a couple. Um, so after this entire section, you want to be able to interpret the slope and y-intercept of the least squared regression line. Use the least squared regression line to predict y for a given x. Calculate interpret residuals and their standard deviation. Explain the concepts of least squares. Determine the equation of the least squared regression line using a variety of methods. Construct and interpret residual plots to assess whether a linear model is appropriate. And assess how well the least squared regression line models the relationship between two variables. We'll also describe how slope, the y-intercept, the standard deviation of the residuals, and r-squared are influenced by outliers. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is what is the regression line? And uh, depending on when you came through um, Algebra 2 or what they were focusing on, you might have also heard this as a line of best fit. Okay? So when you have a, a straight line or a linear relationship between two quantitative variables, um, it's very easy to understand what we have here. A regression line um, really summarizes that relationship between them, um, but only settings or only in settings where the variables help explains or predicts each other. Um, so if we take a look here, we see this regression line, it's cutting through here. Um, it says a regression line is a line that describes how the response variable y changes as the explanatory variable x changes. We often use a regression line to predict the value of y. So again, this is really the big idea what we want here. We're looking for a prediction here. We have some points, we build a line through that model and we use that to predict. So you can see a very natural relationship is we have a vehicle here. This is the miles driven versus the price for Ford F-150 trucks. And you can see as X increases, as the miles go up, the price decreases, this goes down. This has a negative um, slope here, or this is a negative association here, negative relationship. Um, so what we do is we try to build that line. We use that line, it's kind of like, it's not perfect, but it's a model for the data. Uh, much like when we're doing density curves, just like the normal curve is a density curve that sometimes can help model our data. Um, so the equation regression line gives a compact mathematical description of what this model tells us about the relationship between the response variable y and the explanatory variable x. Okay? So suppose that we have y as a response variable, that's plotted on the vertical axis, vertical like up and down, and x is, a hor is the x is the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis, like the horizon. Okay? So the regression line y to x looks like this, y hat equals a plus bx. And so how we, re we read that with the y hat, this is the predicted y. The predicted y is equal to a plus bx. Now, what do those other variables mean? Okay. Well, y or y hat, again, is the predicted value of the response variable y for any given value of the explanatory variable x. Explanatory x. Explanatory x. Kind of help remind us there. B is the slope. We've seen that before. Uh, it's, the, it's the coefficient right in front of the x. That's the amount of which y is predicted to change on average when x increases by one unit. Remember that, um, that slope is, is the average rate of change. Slope is an average. And then a is our y-intercept, the predicted value of y when x is equal to zero. So this is the form that we talk about it. y or the predicted y is equal to a plus bx. So here we have an example of that um, relationship between miles driven and the price. We've already predicted and have the regression line from you. A little bit later, we'll talk about how to do it. So what we have here is we have the predicted price is equal to 38,257 um, minus 0.1629 times the miles driven, okay? So identify the slope and the y-intercept, the regression line in interpreting context, always in context. So what do we have first? Well, I'm gonna look for the slope that's there in front of miles driven. So we can see the slope is negative 0.1629. That makes sense to me that it's negative because I saw a negative slope 
or negative association. So I want to look for that negative sign when I'm looking for the slope. And it's saying that that tells us the price of a used for F-150 is predicted to go down an average of $0.1629 for every additional mile. So we think about that as this being X or X over one. So it goes down 1.629 for every one unit that the truck is driven. And this unit is miles. Okay. Um, if we take a look at what we have here, this is the y-intercept. So here A is equal to 38,257. So what does that mean in context? Well, that means that the predicted price of the Ford F-150 that has been driven zero miles. That's the predicted price of a brand new Ford F-150. Now this may not be perfect, um, but what we do is we've grabbed these data points, we've found the line of best fit or the regression line, and this is what the model tells us and how, that's how we would interpret those two in context. So then if we have a model, how do we make predictions from that? Okay. So we can use a regression line to predict the response y hat for a specific value of explanatory variable x. Let's use the regression, the regression line to predict the price of the Ford F-150 with 100,000 miles. So remember, this is a regression model that we had, and we'll learn how to do that um, uh, by ourselves, but right now it's still given to us. So what do we have? We want to predict the price. We have the miles driven as 100,000, so we just pop in 100,000 into miles driven. Do the math, and we can see the price is 21,976. Remember, that hat, that over the price, reminds us that this is predicted. We wouldn't say that that's what it is, we would continue to, from our, model, uh, from our model, say that's what it's predicted to be. So a Ford F-150 truck with 100,000 miles is predicted to cost $21,967. Tapping cans. So here's another model. Tapping cans, does this make a difference? And it would ask, don't you hate it when you open a can of soda and some of the contents spray all out of the can? Some AP stat students investigated if tapping on the can of soda would reduce the amount of soda expelled after the can can have been shaken. For their experiment, they vigorously shook 40 cans of soda and randomly assigned each one to be tapped for zero seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, or 12 seconds. Then, after opening the can and cleaning up the mess, the students measured the amount of soda that was left in each can. So we're not gonna do this here, but this is an experiment. You can think about kind of a fun way. What's, these, what's the experimental units? What are the different random assignment here? What is the different treatments and that kind of stuff to you. So find some of a fun extra bonus here is to pause this and try and draw this experimental design. All right, so here's what we have. We have the data here and we have it grouped because we had some that were tapped for only zero seconds, some for four, some for eight, some for 12. So we can see that they have some nice clusters there. Okay. So here's the least squared regression line that has been um, put from that. Again, we'll figure out how to do this ourselves, but this is what it's already for us now. So we're just looking at the interpretation. Um, so if you interpret the slope and y-intercept the regression line, let's predict the amount of soda remaining for a can that has been tapped for 10 seconds. And let's predict the amount of soda remaining for a can that has been tapped 60 seconds. So interpret the slope and wind or set the regression line. You're just looking at the 2.63, right? And we can think that as a slope, 2.63 or 2.63 um, over one. Um, so if we look 2.63, that's how much is left in the can. We can see that from uh, slope is a change in y over change of x. So here's y, soda. Here is x tapping time, so 2.63 over 1. So on average, we would predict that there is about 2.63 um, additional milliliters of soda left for every ad additional one second of tapping time. So 2.63 over 1. Predict the amount of soda remaining for a can that has been tapped for 10 seconds. All right, so I'm going to take this uh, 2.48.6 um, plus 2.63 and now my tapping time is 10 seconds. And I'm gonna see that's about, uh, I predict it's 274.9 milliliters. Now predict the amount of soda remaining for a can that has been tapped for 60 seconds. Well, that's interesting, that's off our graph. Let's take a look here. We're gonna change this to 60. 
and that's about 406.4. Um, so that means if you tapped it for more than a minute, there's a lot more soda in there. And maybe what we might find out, if you're a little tricky with your math here, that there might have been more soda left in the can than what we started with. So I think that's a little bit dangerous here that we went all the way out to 60. And that kind of leans to this point here. Which prediction are you most confident in? The one for 10 seconds and the one for 60? I think what we're gonna find is our 10 second sets here within our data set, our model is built around that, is something we can be a lot more confident with than what we can do with 60. Because if you think about it, tapping it for two minutes or five minutes or 10, there's no way we can produce more soda in that can than it ever existed here. So that leads us to this idea, which is called extrapolation. When we use a regression line to predict the response y hat for a predicted or a specific value of the explanatory x, they keep saying y hat, but I'm going to switch more to the predicted y. The accuracy for the prediction depends on how much the data scatter about the line. So when we can substitute any value of x into the equation of the regression line, we must really exercise caution in making predictions outside the observed values of x. So let me go back here real quick. It's okay that we did 10 here, because 10 was in our data set, but going for 60 is way outside our data set. So instead of interpolating, looking inside our data set, we're doing extrapolation, and that's a lot more dangerous. That's not something we want to do. So extrapolation uh, is the use of the regression line for prediction far outside the interval values of explanatory variable x used to obtain the line. Sex predictions are often not, uh, not accurate. And I would even go as far as saying that uh, don't make predictions using values of x that are much larger or much smaller than those that can actually appear in the data. And we'll just go as really far to say extrapolation equals danger. Let's do that right now. Extrapolation equals danger, okay? Don't be dangerous. I know some of you saying that extrapolation is your middle name, but not here, not in stats, okay? Use caution. Um, so at this point, you can stop, um, you can stop and kind of come back to this, but this is really at a place where we're ready to look at some ideas from homework three. And I would also encourage you to look in your book or online book from, for extra examples if you want. So on this homework, remember, we're gonna be focusing on interpreting the slope um, and y intercept a least squared regression line. Remember that slope is the average rate of change. It's the average rate of change, um, what we have in one unit in y over one unit in x. The slope is change in y over change of x. Um, we also wanna use the least squared regression line to predict y for a given x. So we're gonna be having the equation, we're just gonna be plugging values in. And we're gonna talk about um, explaining the dangers of extrapolation. So if you feel like it, you can pause here um, I'm going to move on in just a second, but pause here, um, kind of write down where you're at, try homework number three, and come back. 